Okay, let's start again. How does that look? Okay, so. Okay, so what up, y'all? It's Mikey from Canada Rideballs. Uh, we're gonna do a really quick uh, video today on how to uh, shim the uh, sear of the M17. So this is a brand new uh, M17. I just took it out of the box really quick. So I did the um, the uh, set screw mod, okay? Now, if you guys can see the difference, the set screw sticking out a little bit, that's because I wanted to try the longer one. So this is an eight times 1.25 times 10 uh, Hillman set screw. So I always use the eight times 1.25 times eight, but a lot of people have to use the times 10. So I want to test it out. As you can see, it's just a little bit longer. Absolutely fine. And um, so I also did the bumper mod. So uh, what I've noticed now, a lot of people this last couple of weeks have been getting at me, okay, because they have a lot of different problems. So the first problem that I've been seeing a lot of people have, and it's a very big headache of a problem, what they do is when they are setting their FPS for high FPS, I haven't set the FPS yet. I brought it down a bit, but haven't set it yet. So when you set the uh, FPS on these guys, make sure your marker is not engaged. Okay, do not work on the velocity when it is engaged. A bunch of people end up doing that and what happens, they blow their velocity cap. Okay, I can tell you about 10 people, a mixture of clients, friends, name it, that have blown this this last week. So. Uh, one reason we use an ASA when we're tuning is because it's a lot easier. Disengage, make sure there's no air, okay? Then tune, put it back on. I know it's annoying, I know it can be frustrating, but it's a lot better than breaking things. So make sure it is not engaged when you're uh, setting your velocity. Now, another thing is um, I had, I broke my uh, bolt pin, which is this guy right here, if you guys can see. Now, the reason that happened is because I ended up just, I decided that it was a smart idea to install a charging handle. And what happened is because it's set on high velocity, the charging handle was going back and it ended up breaking my bolt pin and it made a world of a headache. So I finally fixed that. So I don't suggest using a, a BRH charging handle when it comes to high velocity. So another thing is, so one of my M17s, so when I left it on 385 FPS with the 9.9 .9 gram, uh, which was getting me 40 joules on the dot, Okay, I ran through about 500 shots and I didn't have a problem. But the one that, uh, another marker I was setting up, I was getting a bunch of these bursts, okay? So you can have it in semi, you'll be firing and you'll get a bunch of bursts, which is not good um, and you know, it's a problem. So one thing we ended up discovering with the help of uh, Sean is um, you need to shim the sear, okay? So once, obviously these are paintball guns. now. There's a couple of things that happens when you start getting high velocity over a you know, consistent period of time. These things start have weak points, which they're meant to have weak points, so they break down so you can't do that. Now, uh, things like the bumper, adding the bumper, and uh, shimming the sear, th these things will really help, okay? Um, some people don't have the problem, but it, it's something that comes over time. So I suggest you do it right away, I do it right away. Okay, and it's pretty easy, you can just basically use something at home. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, start with that. Now to take off the uh, trigger assembly, it's actually a little bit harder than a, a lot of people think. I, I even uh, didn't think you'd have to do all of this, but what we're gonna have to do is, because you can see we've got the stock shroud here, we gotta take the uh, stock shroud off, okay? Now, when you guys take off these uh, brackets, always make sure you know which one is the left, the, the bracket on the left side and the bracket on the right side. I know they look exactly the same, but what will end up happening is um, if you mix them up, they actually won't, um, they won't, uh, oh yeah, sorry. They won't, um, they won't fit properly and uh, it'll be a headache. So a couple of these screws, what you're gonna have to do is hold it down on one side. Let's see if this works. No, that's for something else. You're gonna have to hold it down on one side. So I put an Allen key on one side, and then I take another Allen key. And while you just hold that one side, it's just a lot easier to take this out. Now, when you install everything, you want to install from the left side. 
Okay. Starting off with the Megua. Not these two last uh, screws you gotta take out. Same process. Okay. Allen key on one side. Another Allen key on the other, holding it in place. Oh, it's this Allen key, that's why. This thing is the garbage one that strips everything. Okay, so we're still taking off the magwa, the bolts to the magwa. I don't know why it's being such a headache today. Okay, so I like to keep all the uh, screws I use in one place so you don't get them mixed up. Sometimes it's the smallest thread, you won't even pay attention, but they're different. Okay, so that's out, that's out. Okay, so Megwell is officially out. Now, a lot of times you don't have to take off the shroud, but just to make it easier, I'm just gonna make these loose. I'm gonna be switching up the shroud anyways. I use a uh, MCS prison shroud. Um, it's definitely my favorite. There's a, a lot of uh, options out there, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's my favorite. I like, I like using metal stuff. I really don't like, uh, I try to stay away from anything plastic. It's just my personal preference, especially when you're using these markers on uh, FPS, you know, I'd rather use something that's more reliable. Okay, so. Now, like I said earlier, these brackets, they look identical, but you want to keep the left to the left and the right to the right. So we're going to take off our stock shroud, put it over there. Now, Megwell just slips off, okay? After you take everything off, it just slips off. I'm going to put it to the side. Now, this is our right bracket, so I'm going to keep it to the right. This is our left bracket. I'm going to keep it to the left. So, magwell well off. Now we gotta take out the trigger housing itself. First thing is the uh, bolt with the with the ring on it. So, like most of the other ones, hold one side. Take it out. It goes there. Just doing the screw on the other side. Okay, so that is our trigger housing. As you can see, that was the screw from the Megwell, and that was the uh, one with the ring. Now we're gonna slide this off. Super simple, just slide it down. Okay, make sure this is always in uh, good shape. It'll bend out sometimes, just you know, push it back if you have to. It is pretty important. So we're gonna put our upper, I guess you can call it, to the top here. So this is our trigger housing right here now first thing we're gonna do is i've seen this on a couple people's uh videos i'm not sure if it actually does anything but we're gonna do it for now since if it does uh do anything we might as well be prepared so as you can see on the trigger itself okay there's a little tiny allen uh keyhole here and there's another one right here so when you're tuning the trigger this is what tunes it but you have to first release it with this letting you be able to tune it so we're gonna go to the skinnier one first, the small guy. I'm gonna go counterclockwise a couple times until it basically becomes flush with the uh, 
with the trigger itself. Now, I, if you are gonna tune your trigger, I suggest you do it uh, while your marker is gassed up. If you have any problems, uh, make it tighter. So you don't usually have to do it on semi, but I don't use full auto. So, but um, a lot of times with high FPS, um, a lot of people would do like tightening this up. It, it does help sometimes if you need it. So the uh, next step is gonna be taking off the uh, handle. Now, when you take off the handle, you're gonna have a ball and a spring, okay? Right over here. Make sure you do not lose that, okay? So from underneath, we're gonna turn it around. Here's our Allen key. This one was kind of hard to find the right size. I think it's either a, a three, three millimeter Allen key. I'm not a hundred percent, but it was kind of tricky to find. So counterclockwise, we're gonna take off our handle. Uh, like I said, there's gonna be a spring and a ball that pop out right here. And you guys can, if you guys can see, I always keep my uh, trigger on, um, on semi when I'm tuning, just because I've noticed that if you have it on safety, there could be some problems. Okay, so I'll finish getting this guy out. Really? There we go, handle out. Okay, screw in there, Allen key's still in there. I'm just gonna leave this all together. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. Uh oh, so this is the spring and the ball. Make sure you do not lose them. Put them to the side as well. As you can see, the way I line it up is kind of like the steps. So when I go to put everything back together, I'm gonna to be going this way, just to make it a little bit easier. Okay. So next thing here, um, let's take out the selector switch. Selector switch, super easy. Like I said, hold down this side, get your Allen key for the other side. There's a little screw in the middle of the uh, selector switch. And you use your Allen key. Oh, it's too big. Counterclockwise while you hold the other side. Now the selector switch comes out. There's a selector switch. Now, we're gonna move on to the Phillips, I believe it is. This little screw right here. Okay, so that's it. That's your... Uh, Trigger assembly, what are you gonna do? Just give it a little bit of force and it comes off like that. So this is our trigger assembly. Let's zoom in a bit on this guy. Okay, so as you guys can see, now, there is a couple free floating pins in this, okay? So if they fall out, it's not a big deal. So this guy and this guy, these two pins right here, they're free floating, okay? They will fall out. It's not a big deal. You just put them back in place and that's it. This is also free floating, okay? It's gonna fall out, same as this. So this is your sear right here. You guys can see that properly. This is your sear right here. This is the spring that we wanna shim. So first thing I always do is take this guy out like that, simple. Okay, what you're gonna do, so let me see how you guys can see this. You're gonna put, what I like to do is I like to put my hand on the spring so it doesn't just, you know, uh, kind of whip out. You just gotta push it up. Okay, so this is our Sear, this is what we're gonna be shimming. Well, it's the spring that we're gonna be shimming. And this is our spring, sorry guys. So, the way it works, okay. Uh, I couldn't really find anything right now, but just for the time being, I'm gonna use this little screw right here, okay. You gotta always make sure the head will fit right in between there, okay. 
and you want a little bit of length to it so when it goes into the spring okay it'll give it some support so i'll find a proper uh, screw that's a good size and i'll you know post it but for now let's just get this done so you guys get the idea of how it is so on the uh, sear itself okay there's a little ball what you want to do is you want to take your spring and your um, shim you want to line it up with that ball okay once you've lined it up with the ball you're gonna take sorry guys you just keep making sure this doesn't go fuzzy so you gotta line it up with the ball okay you're gonna line up the uh, the sear with the uh, pin Okay, now you're gonna just push down. Okay, so as you can see, it's in place right now. But what I like doing, just to double check, I take my Allen key and I make sure that bottom is perfectly in place. Okay. Now, when you're when you're trying to uh, you know, kind of test it out, hold down. Hold down the uh, sear so it doesn't flip up because there's always going to be pressure on it. Now, as you can see, that spring's gone harder and it gives it a little bit of backup. So it's the weak spots that we're basically giving a little bit of backup. I'm just going to make sure everything's right. Make sure it's in place. Oops, what was that? Definitely wasn't in place well. Okay, let's try this again. So line it up with the ball. I want to make sure everything's right so nothing moves around when it's in there. Okay, so as you can see, we got the shim in there. Looks good. So always want to make sure that bottom is in place. Okay, that should be good. So, like I said, two floating pins. Two floating pins, you just gotta make sure they line up. Now, if any of the pins that are not floating, if they do end up falling out, it's okay. It's not a big deal at all. You just gotta put them back in place. Okay, so you'll see a little spot where they go. Just, I put the bottom one in first, and then Oh, come on, man. What's going on today? So, I'm going to put in the bottom one. 
And then the top one. Okay, then we got the other floating little bolt. We're gonna put that where it goes right here. I honestly taught myself this, you guys, off a picture. Okay, so it's really, it looks a little bit more confusing than it is, but it's really not. So this guy here, I like to always make sure that the, um, the part right, I don't know, see this flat part right here? The part that's flat? I like to get that sticking to the uh, right side. So I line it up just like that. I'm not sure if that makes any difference, but that's how I like doing it. So if you can take a good look at that right there, that's basically it. So let's put this back together. I'm gonna take the other half we just took off. Okay, I'm gonna line it up. Basically the hole goes over the uh, selector switch. So clearly something's not lining up. Oh, maybe it's the floating pins. Yeah, that's what I think it is. There we go. Just give it a little bit of force. Make sure everything's lined up. Okay. I'm gonna start with our screw that we took out here. This guy back in. It's good to go. We're gonna tighten this guy. Actually, you know what? Actually, yeah, whatever, leave it. Tighten this guy. Once we're done with it, just don't give it any extra resistance, just till you feel it go tight, stop. We're gonna put our selector switch back. it up so I select the switch okay so I know this was a really fast video you guys but to the install is super simple just make sure you line up Make sure you're lining this uh, silver part up properly and then it goes in place. Literally all I do is slip it over, make sure everything lines up. There you go, just like that. Okay, now after you've done that, you're gonna put your magwell on and your shroud. 
And that's absolutely it, you guys. So, hope this video helped. Uh, definitely helped me. If you have any bursts or just want some longevity with your M17, definitely the way to go.